Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and on the bench today as you can see uh, we have a Sony PSP right here uh, no the video is not about the PSP but this PSP is what brought this whole thing around so it's kind of a swings and roundabouts kind of thing now let me explain what's going on first things first let me get rid of that there we go now sorry this is my streaming pc that a stream model painting and whatnot forgot to take it off anyway point is um some of you may or may not know my younger brother is suffering from bowel cancer and uh in his chemotherapy uh issues they because he has a specific body type where his body does not retain fat it's an actual genetic condition he had i don't know its name but uh, Point is, he's never been able to maintain a high level of body fat. He's always been very aesthetic, which means you can see all of his veins and everything else and whatnot. It's kind of gross, but at the same time, it is what it is. He's quite buff. He's quite physically fit. So when you think of an aesthetic person, quite literally the first person that pops into my head is my brother, is my younger brother. Well, he sent me this PSP. Now, the reason why he sent this to me is because he put some soft mods on it. And so we're going to let this boot up. And it's a regular PSP, but if you go to the storage, it has got some emulations on there. Now, my younger brother collects vintage video games and consoles. He still has our original um, Sega Master System 1, our Se uh, and a whole bunch of other, th other ones. And he's even got some of our original games, which is what we've got here. Now, here you can see is Street Fighter 2. But the problem arises when um he tries to play uh you can hear it slowing down right there you, you can literally hear it slowing down right there it shouldn't be that slow so this little psp has something going on with it so you can now hear it i know i'm not slowing the video down see i'm not slowing the video down that's how that's how badly optimized the emulator is. So I'm gonna. And now it speeds back up again. You see what I'm saying? It's, it's got slowdowns and speeds up. So what I decided to do was tell him, don't worry about that PSP. Put it back in your collection. I will sort you. I'll, I'll do a solid. So. I started looking on Amazon. Now, this is not sponsored. This is not sponsored by Razer or anything like that. None of these products are sponsored. This is off my own back. This cost me off my own back. Now, this is the Razer Kishi. It is a universal gaming controller for Android phones. Now, I thought, okay, it's going to be a blue Bluetooth dongle thing. You just put it on, link it, and then you can just then go through and manually configure controls. No, 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 no. The moment you plug this into your USB Type C, your phone must have a USB Type C connector. Okay, it's this one. Okay, if it doesn't have that type of connector, which should, because most modern phones do, it won't work. Okay, now uh, also you cannot use your phone's protective case while the device is plugged in. Now let me explain. Packaging on this, uh, I, I, I'm unlike, unlike other reviewers, I'm going to start off with the packaging. The packaging for this thing is. Bloody solid. I'm not going to lie. Razor, you made a good box. You did. You made a really good box. Nice little carry handle. Downside is, is it's only held in with these little bits of tape that you have to cut to get the product out. But the point is, when you first take the product out, okay, it's got these little protective cushions to make sure that it doesn't rattle around or anything. I love that idea. Seriously, other, other manufacturers, take in. This is amazing. I love this. I love this, I love this, I love this. And I've been using this now for about four or five days. And it's it's managed to put up with my my raging. Bear in mind, I've stabbed keyboards to death live on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash deceptive copies. Go check it out. Um, and so I thought, okay, what's the deal with this? Uh, at first, I couldn't figure out how to undo it. And it's actually quite easy. You've got these little tabs in the back. Okay, and you only want to do this when you when you're transporting the device. So you don't want to do it when you're gaming, obviously you crush your phone. But problem is, see, it's there you go. And that's how you undo it. Now you think how'd you get your phone in? You turn them up like this. 
take your phone of choice. Mine has happens to be an Android A12. Okay, now this phone is going to my brother. Uh, I'm literally giving him an Android A12 phone. And when you push it in, that's it. And it's fairly robust. So if you're used to playing a lot of fidgety fighting games, like Tekken, Street Fighter, stuff like that. Um, and of course, I'm just going to put his pin in. All right, and we just... Now, I tried several emulators, and they were a pain in the butt, but I did manage to get Retro Arch to work. Now, what I'm going to do is, see, it's automatically configured. This is the thing. Retro Arch automatically can, can configures this thing. It, it sees the device and configures it instantly. So what we're going to do is we are going to go to the exact same core. We're going to load up Nintendo. We're going to load up the same emulator. It's the same ROM. It's the ROM from his own cartridge. Okay, he actually has an extractor for backups. Okay, same game. Recognize instantly. Now, playback is amazing. It's in what you expect. Screen's a little bit dirty, so let me get a, a wipe because I've been having to. I, I did have to uh, unlock his phone uh, SIM, SIM card wise. Because he's on a phone carrier that gets really bad signal here where I live. So I I fixed that for him and put him on a universal carrier. Which means he gets the best signal, period. Now normally I wouldn't use an alcohol-based wipe to do this. but Well, you'd use an alcohol-based wipe, sorry. And so... You can just use the arrow keys to go back. No information available. It's fine. Uh, I don't. And we can. I don't really have any gripes about uh, medium punch. Heavy kick there, light kick there, you kick on off. Alright, so that's what I wanted. Now, again, I'm not going to, it's not going to be a stream on how to play Street Fighter 2 Turbo, but the point is, this is a Super Nintendo being emulated by an Android phone. And of course, my brother's a Ryu fan, so I will play Ryu, because he's a Ryu fan, I'm a Ken fan. That was always a big contention between me and my younger brother, is who was better, Ken or Ryu. And... It's been a power driver. No frame skips, no issues, no nothing. And I, I absolutely. The only downside is, is I have to physically touch the screen to bring up the menu for some reason. The 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 the, the Windows the, the Xbox play button doesn't bring up the menu. So it's a configuration issue. I've got to figure that out. And then we can go to load content, emulate. Uh, where did he send me the ROMs to? ROMs, Sega, no, no, Snes. Slam Masters, okay? And this is Saturday Night Slam Masters. This is another game that me and him used to play together on, on weekends. Me and my younger brother used to sit down and play for hours on a Super Nintendo, no internet, no nothing, and we would even go to our local video store, uh, R&B Videos, on Meeting House Lane. The building's still there, but the company's long gone, and we would rent Super Nintendo and Sega Mega Drive games before we committed to buying them, because they were still 50, 60 pounds of cartridge, you know? And of course, this is basically just Street Fighter based wrestlers instead. Um, and again, I I have to I have to give props. Um, the the now of course I I did go ahead and <laughs> I did go ahead and ask him for two because I want to keep the 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 things because these, these believe it or not this is actually uh, my road rash cartridge. <laughs> This is my Road Rash cartridge. He still has my original Sega Mega Drive and my 32X and my C C CD add-on and all, and all my games and everything else and my 12 controllers and whatnot. He still has them all. So this is mine. 
I legally own this. God, this music takes me back. Ah, oh, takes me back. Anyway, guys, so, point is, what do I think of the Razor Kishi? I think it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm, it takes a while to get used to the straps on the back. I've even taken this out on a walk with me. Um... Let me just turn just turn the phone off for a second. I've even taken the device out with me um, for a walk, and it was fine. I mean, some people um, stopped me. And they were like, "What game? What what, what handheld is that?" Because they saw the the Xbox buttons and they thought, "Oh, is Xbox coming out with a portable gaming system?" I'm like, "No," because they saw me. I was not gonna lie. I was playing a PlayStation One game. I believe it was. Um, Uh, I believe, come on, again, this is one of the issues that, uh, there we go, that the phone, it, it's just an Android issue, um, let me, even has a built-in file browser, that's kind of cool, low content, no, storage again it doesn't you can configure this all up to be pre-read again i should have done that before the film i believe it was um ridge racer there you go here you go i'll even i'll even play ridge racer okay hmm. or not oh that's right i've got to load it up separately I've got to... they have their own way of loading certain things to go to settings and then you go to directory because it keeps wanting to reload the, and again these are bio uh, places with playstation one bioses from um my own for well one i've got my playstation one two and three uh, as you guys know and um so those Let's go back content go down there's a lot of faffing about to get them to work but when they work there we go they work amazing that that intro right there no lies you can see the goosebumps Happy days and good memories with a PlayStation. Um, me and my girlfriend at the time used to. <laughs> I forgot they had the little mini game on the Namco games. <laughs> oh, bring that back! There we go. Option. Oh, it doesn't play the audio. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I was complaining why it wasn't playing playing the audio. Boom, boom. Yeah. Check it out. This is an actual PlayStation 1 full frame. Look, no frame skips, no nothing. Audio's a bit choppy. That's fine. Audio can be a bit choppy. Oh, that was a nice little fish tail there. Okay, so oh, and again, it could also be because I'm running this on a really bad SD card. Um, my brother's SD card that he gave me was a uh, off-brand Chinese one I've never heard of, and. Um, so I'm going to put a better, faster reading, faster reading, um, 
Oh god. I cannot. I'm gonna drive in first place. Here we go. I'm actually a better driver in first person. And I'm a, and I'm a better driver in real life, just saying guys, it's a video game. See look at that. Whoa, drifting with that entire turn. Oops. Sorry Lamborghini. No, it's a Ferrari, sorry. Ferrari. They're both they're both Italian shit boxes. Yeah, I said it. Okay, the final lap! And so what do I think of the controller? I think it's amazing. What do I think of Retro Arch? I think it has a lot of potential. Out. I think it has a lot of potential. Um I would really like to play this game with the audio, like the music, but then again, you know. I'm glad I'm I'm somewhat glad that the audio doesn't work because it would be a copyright issue. And I really don't want uh, the video playing. But other than that, this is a pretty good This is a pretty goddamn good emulator. And I'm glad I picked it for him. And it's even got an N64 emulator on here as well. Um, there is a ton of really good uh, emulators out there. Plus the fact, you know, all you got to do is just download it if you've got the right BIOSes that you are legally yours and that you own the actual games. You can then use the ROMs. Again, here in England, we've got a law stating that you can have a ROM on your machine for 24 hours if you don't own a copy for evaluation purposes, and then you must delete it. Um, but we also have a thing of if you own the actual game, like if I own it, if I showed you my, my PlayStation 1 clip, again, it's not here, it's in Cambridge. I don't live in Cambridge, but if I was to show you my entire re original game collection, I think my mum said it's filled up my nan's entire spare bedroom from floor to ceiling full of original PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, uh, Sega Mega Drive, Sega Dr Dreamcast, uh, Dreamcast, Mega Drive, uh, Saturn. I was a huge Sega fan. I, I Sega does what Nintendo done. I was a huge uh, 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 Sega, uh, Sega fan. As you can see, it's right there, guys. It's amazing. This emulator is amazing. And again, the review is not about the emulator. The review is about the, the device. Um, and what can I say? It... It's just good. It, it, it's, I get Atari Lynx vibes because it's about as wide as an Atari Lynx, as, as I remember. I used to own one. That thing used to go through batteries like crazy. Um, and that's, that's another thing. You can finally have a Game Boy, Game Gear Advance, you know, uh, uh, whatever, in Nintendo SP, whatever, you know, that you want, and not go through batteries like crazy. Now, this does have a USB-C pass-through cable, which will charge your device. It's a trickle charger, which means don't, ex don't hook it up to a fast amperage charge because you will destroy this. It says so in the documentation. Guys, please, read the bloody documentation that comes with your, your, your devices, okay? The reason why I say this is because not only do you get really cool Razer stickers, which I still, I've got like a drawer full of Razer stickers, um, but most importantly, a lot of time goes into making these products, into making the leaflets and the instruction manuals, okay? And all you got to do is just follow the instruction manuals and it tells you, you know, there's a little light on it right here that tells you uh, when it's connected and when it's, you know, when it's charging, uh, things of that nature. Uh, and you, go, you can also download the Cortex mobile amp, uh, uh, app. Yes, it is a paid uh, uh, app. But what it will do is it will reconfigure uh, the device to even work with inside your Android, operate, Android operating system. So you don't even technically don't have to have to dis disable it ever again. And so this is going to be a little, uh, 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 again, this, I'm, I'm rushing this video mostly because I'm going to be giving this to my younger brother. And um, he's currently, like I said, he's currently in hospital. And I want him to get well. I want him to get well soon. And I want him to have something to play while he's uh, getting ready. At the same time, I want something to call him on <laughs> while he's in the hospital. So I know he's doing all right and, and can get updates real time from him, if that makes sense. And so, like I said, guys, this this is the Razer Kishi. It's, it's a really good product. 
packaging's amazing. Uh, I got it on Amazon during Black Friday for I think it was 43, 45 pounds ish. Uh, normally it's about 80. It's a bit pricey, um, but the quality is good. You can hear the clicks. I'm not even kidding. My microphone is all the way over there. Okay, look. Here's the microphone. So the fact that you can hear the clicks. You know, that should tell you something. The fact that you can hear the clicks from that sort of a distance. They've got a lot of play in them. Um, the HAP sensors on top are really good. They don't interfere with the phone or anything like that. Uh, the D-pad's very responsive. It's look, got a little bit of slop in it for my liking. I like a light, nice tight D-pad. Giggity is what she said. And, um, you know, the only issue I have is this thumb, thumb cup right here. Is it's right in the way of playing very intensive games very very uh, fidgety button fighters things of that nature it gets in the way if this was like a module or have one where it's a d-pad instead of a thumbstick or better yet swap them so that both thumbsticks are at the top you know but uh, it, it, it's just a minor minor gripe um who am I to say? I mean, my brother's right-handed, so he might he might actually find it a lot more easier. I'm left-handed, of course. So I'm I'm used to using everything buttons on this hand because all controllers are designed for right-handed people. But the D-pad is on the left. Make that make sense? Uh, anyway, guys, so that is a quick, dirty review of the Razer Kishi uh, gaming controller. Uh, again, it's been hooked up to an Android A12. I do happen to have an Android A21 here. Um, let me just get rid of these notifications. Um, I do happen to have access to an Android A21. It's smaller, more compact. Um, and again, I guess the smaller the phone, the more the the, the more rigid. Because the wider the phone, the less rigid it's going to be for for twisting. But even for them, for twisting purposes, again, I'm I'm just going to. You know, it's really not that much flex. And like I said, it uses the phone as, as part of the... Re re now, I'm going to show you how to put it back together. So you just pop it off. Disconnect your phone. You then slide your corners together. That's a little fancy magnets thing system. Everything's all held together with magnets these days. Do you not know the magnetic radiation is a thing? Yes, magnets can. Some magnets can give off radiation, just depending on the strength of the magnet, I guess. Uh, and I believe it was like you, you clip it at the bottom. Anyway, the, the instructions. This is the only finicky part. I'm not going to lie. There we go. It is putting it back together again. So you can put it in there. It does. There, there is a, a separate purchasable um, carry case that you can get with a little zipper on it. That you can even put your phone in and zip that up too. So you got your, your controller and your phone uh, together, which is why I suggest that you don't um, use it on your main phone. Use it on a backup phone. Now, as you guys know, I have tons of phones. I buy and sell phones all the time on Facebook Marketplace. I buy them, I fix them, I flip them, I unlock them, things of that nature. I have a phone that has Kali Linux on it that I use as a uh, uh, um, as a uh, wireless terminal to my laptop. So while I'm in class, if it's just a general taking notes session, um, I will leave my laptop at home, plugged in, powered onto my to my network. In fact, that laptop is right here, and I will use my Android phone that's over there um, and just power it on bring up a, 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 a web shell and then now I know I'm directly into my Kali Linux as our operating system and everything I'm doing on that phone is being done on that laptop so which is kind of cool I do like that there's a bit of a latency when I'm trying to send large files but that's because of the distance my, my the university I go to is a good 45 minutes away so it's a pain in the ass but then again, I also use, I also use uh, wireless things like Dropbox, things of that nature. But the point is, um, don't use your main phone with this device. Because clearly, I mean, if you're middle of gaming and your phone goes off, 
you know, it's, it's kind of hard to answer your phone when you've got a controller slapped to it, you know. So, always use an older phone, preferably, you know, and this is the best part is, get a phone that's broken, um, has a bad battery, for example, but it's a good phone, like a really powerful phone, and um, especially, get something with a Qualcomm chip, um, the, A10, the Android A12 right now, um, as you can see, this is a brand, technically a brand new, uh, it's a used, uh, Samsung A12. Uh, get yourself an, a Samsung A12. Works perfectly. It runs PlayStation One games just fine. Has it struggles a little bit with PlayStation Two, but that's because PlayStation Two had a unique architecture type, and this has to emulate that plus the processor plus everything in the back running in the background. As issues with that, but other than that, um, PlayStation One, N64, Dreamcast, uh, Sega Saturn, uh, Mega Drive, um, Master, anything below PlayStation. So in that PlayStation One era, so PlayStation One, Saturn, Dreamcast has no issues running. It even runs CPS 1, 2, and 3 games pretty easy. Um, if you don't want CPSs, that's Capcom's Capcom's playable arcade systems 1, 2, and 3. So Marvel vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and um, Street Fighter Street Fighter 3 series. So Street Fighter 3rd Strike and things like that. can play those games, plays those games flawlessly. No issues. So I'm actually quite happy with that. And like I said, guys, still got the sticker on it for crying out. See? Razor Black Easy Android Low Latency. And I, I'm i glad I bought this for my brother. Ultra Low Latency, clickable analog thumbsticks, fits most Android devices. Uh, again, also make sure that it is compatible and it does have a compatibility list on the side Galaxy 8, S8, S8 Plus, S9, S, S9s, S10s, Note 8. So again, this is, a, this is a A12, so it also fits A12s. Um, and it also should fit the A21. I think this is an A21. It's an A21 or an A51. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, I've got that with my new contract, contract on the so I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyway, the point is, um, it will work with those as long as it's USB Type-C. Uh, if it doesn't, then, you know, it's not necessarily the controller's fault. It, it, I, again, Razer is producing a really good controller. Um... And the fact that it's recognized instantly by RetroArch. I cannot suggest RetroArch enough as, a, as, as an emulator system. It is. It's amazing. You can go in there. You can download whatever emulator you want under the RetroArch platform. And they will configure it to work with your Android device. If it can, it is. And if, if it can't, it will say, warning, you may may get frame skips here, 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 and here. Uh, that That's... I will do a separate review on RetroArch if you guys want me to. I will. Um, but as for the device itself, as for the Razer Kishi, it's Black Friday, so buy. Buy, 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 buy. If you're thinking about it, just buy it. Worst case scenario is you can wait after the sales and send it back to Amazon. Or send it back to Best Buy or wherever you get it from. Um, avoid eBay scalpers. Um, I know one guy... Um, Right around here, he bought one of these from a guy off, right, oh, off eBay. He opened it up, and there was a brick inside. And when he went to complain to Amazon, the guy had changed the ad to say "box only." And Amazon, uh, uh, not Amazon, sorry, eBay is, uh, uh, and eBay is currently trying to call that. Same as Facebook Marketplace. These are going to be flooded on Facebook Marketplace uh, after the New Year and whatnot, when kids start breaking their phones and whatnot and stuff. And I'm telling you now, I will be picking these up. Um, because I will be picking these up, slapping them on, on old phones, and just turning them into pure hardcore emulator systems. Um, of course, within legal reasons. Um, you know, I, I, again, I'm not all for I'm not for for copyright infringements or anything like that. Again, I'm not condoning piracy. This entire video does not condone piracy. I legally own those games that I showed you. I have copies of those games. These those those ROM files were sent to me by my brother. Okay, from my original media, from my original discs. So if you are a, a, if you are a preservist of, of original media, I've still got my original Final Fantasy VII collection. Okay, and he's copied all the discs for me and then put the discs back in their case very carefully because my brother knew how much I cared about my, my PlayStation 1 collection. Not the platinum version, I've got the original OG original play, uh, Final Fantasy VII, same as Vagrant Story. If you've never played Vagrant Story, shame on you. It, in my honest opinion, is better. It is better, in my honest opinion. Vagrant Story is better than Final Fantasy. There, I said it. 
Okay, I said it. I said it. Anyway, Razor Kishi, definitely a buy. Um, buy it now, especially during the sales. You can get you can get up to 30 percent off. I've seen some places, uh, especially on Amazon stores, uh, sell it for at least forty five to fifty percent off. Um, and sadly, I didn't snag those at that time because, well, I'd already bought it, and my Alexa uh, reminded me that uh, you've got some items on your wish list, blah, 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 blah. I was like, okay, cool, what are they? And she's like, listing them, and I was like, oh, let me go take a look. So I took a look, and yeah, so it's a quality box, you know, it, hold, it holds up, it's a quality box, quality product. Uh, Compared to some of the other previous Razer products I've owned, I go hard on their headsets. Um, I genuinely think Razer's headsets have come down in quality over the years, uh, as where their products have become more mainstream brand. Uh, I've noticed a lot of indie product developers, when they go mainstream and a product they make goes mainstream and, and streamers are buying it and gamers are buying it, People and influencers are buying it. I hate that word, influencers. You don't influence anyone. Shut up. You know when that all goes uh, uh, mainstream, all of a sudden, a an eighteen dollar headset is now thirty eight dollars, forty eight dollars, fifty eight dollars, sixty eight dollars, ninety eight dollars. The headsets that you've already made and already paid for and are already in the warehouse and are technically dead stock or are toxic stock because they're 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 not being shipped or sold. Why are you upping those prices? Say to them, look, after this production, after this production run, the price is going to increase. Da, 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 da. You know, yes, that will put a FOMO, a fear, fear of missing out in on that headset so people will buy it. Point is, you will then get rid of that dead stock. Hello, it's a sales, it's a simple sales thing. But the point is, uh, I noticed that I've got, and I've got several Razer headsets up over there where they've just broken. Uh, even the microphone connector is... Uh, 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 come desoldered or wanna like I said, it's a quality quality insurance thing. And in the past, I I used to praise Razer because they were the only company that came out with left-handed gaming mouse. I am predominantly left-handed, okay. And so all of my mice are either ambidextrous with two wasted buttons, which just I hate that for productivity. I am a huge man of personal productivity. I mean, literally right now, I'm not even lying to you. I've got five characters logged in on Star Wars Galaxy's Legends server, and they're all my uh, yeah. See, I'm not even joking. I I am big on productivity. <laughs> so the fact I've got two wasted buttons on the side of my mouse pisses me off um, to no end. And I cannot find a left-handed gaming mouse worth a shit anymore. And to buy a left-handed Razer Naga is almost three hundred pounds now because they're not made anymore. And hello. Razor, please start making left-handed mice again. Okay, seriously. Um, I have one. Actually, there's one left-handed mouse I like. Let me get it real quick. Let me get it. Um, not even joking when I say I go for a lot of mice. This is just a small sample size of mice that I have. Um, that's going off to a... Oh, that's actually going off to a winner of a contest. Uh, that's a default micro shaft. It's this one. This one. This one's literally a left-handed mouse. It's designed for left-handed people, as you can see. It's designed to, to help you with uh, wrist wrist issues. Uh, I suffer from arthritis, osteoarthritis in my hands and my wrist, and so constant wrist movements like this hurt. So I need to play games like Escape from Tarkov, things of that nature. It was a no-no. It's this mouse. But the problem with this mouse is. That's my hand. My hand engulfs the mouse, ladies. My hand is huge. Okay, I have rather large hands. I have rather, rather large feet too. Um, but the point is, notice what the buttons are all on the top. So I wasn't missing out on any productivity of how actually having these two buttons. I just wanted the mouse to be bigger. So that my hand was more, say, because there's a big space right here. And I even tried to put, like, getting some shaping foam and, and reshaping the mouse so that my hand could sit on it and rest easier. And oh, So, 
and that's the uh, large uh, logitech 300 series 300 s i like that mouse it's just it's too small so i couldn't use it so i'm now down to using these crappy chinese wong hung low wireless ones that fit just nicely in my hand but i just want to gut it and take the buttons and everything else with that but i can't do that you can't do that so i'm at the point where i'm thinking about just designing and building my own mouse and um or checking out uh, pcb way or something like that and seeing what they've got for projects and just anyway like i said it, it razor please come on bring back the left-handed mouse anyway guys that's a review for the razor key sheet um i like it i do uh would i recommend this product to other people yes that's why i'm doing this video i'm literally doing this video to recommend this product to other people it is a good product. It's sturdy. The box is incredibly sturdy. Um, the only issue I had, uh, as you saw, was just with the software, with setting up the, the retro arch. But that's me. That's not the product. I can't blame the product for that. I can only blame me. That was on me. So anyway, guys. I'm going to move that out of the way. So anyway, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one, guys.